Hi all, once the future gamer here and welcome to another Pokemon challenge. Last time we beat Pokemon Pill with a single Glamiao. Not actually that tricky a challenge beyond some absolutely horrific final fights near the end of the game. Today we're going to go for something else. It was voted for on Twitter and today we work out if I can beat Pokemon Black with a single Mean Fu. Now looking at the BST for this, it's not actually that bad for a first form Pokemon. 350 total altogether, which is the same as Growlithe, Rufflet, Buneeric, Skidoo and the Sinnoh Fossils. 85 in attack is decent, 65 in speed isn't too bad. Defences are a bit low with 50 points apiece, so we'll have to see what we can do about that. What's worse is the HP at base 45, so a bit of a glass tank. Probably not the best for some later drawn out battles. The move set isn't bad, there's some powerful moves on here, including a variety of kicks, U-turn, bounce, and probably something that's going to come in handy in Drain Punch. As previously stated, the HP is terrible, so any sort of recovery I can make mid-fight is going to be vital. As for the TMs, there's a great number of flying, rock, ground and normal options to go with. Hmm, how I think this will go. I don't think the early game will be too hard, and I can foresee little problems in the middle too. Other than maybe the Electric Gym with the Emolga, and potentially the Bug Gym, if we don't have coverage by that point, I don't think the Gym Challenge will be that hard. I have a feeling the Elite Four, particularly the Psychic Trainer Caitlyn and Ghost Trainer Chantal might be brutal. So, just to go through the rules, I can only use Mean Foo in combat. If there are any mandatory double battles, I'll fling Pokeballs at the enemy when it is the turn of the second Pokemon to avoid gaining an advantage. I can't use any items in battle outside of Pokeballs, but held items are okay. I can capture a Pokemon to use them for HM moves, but they won't be permitted to throw an attack. Other than using the UPR to get mean food at the start, no glitches or exploits. If you enjoy this and want to see me make more content like this, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and all that jazz. We name ourselves OJ and move on to the start of the game. Using the Universal Pokemon Randomizer, I choose to replace Tepi because it does evolve into a partial fighting type. Neither of the other stars have a special advantage or disadvantage against fighting types, so this seems reasonable. Cherin has an unpheasant late game, Bianca has Mashana, which are both going to be far more problematic. We select Minfu as our starter, then go on to fight Bianca and Snivy, who goes down to a Meditate and three pound attacks. Next up is Sharon and Oshawott, who does a little better, but with another Meditate and four pounds, the Otter goes down. That's out of the way. We look at Mean Fu's nature and determine that he possesses a hardy nature, so neutral all around. His ability is in a focus, which could be worse. A bit situational. Given the alternatives were Regenerator or Reckless, I think we possibly got the best outcome. We nicknamed Mean Fu Norris for Chuck Norris. Out onto Route 1 we go, and unlike in the Glamiao run, I actually EV train here. There's a lot of Pat Rat and Lillipup here that give attack EVs, and that's what we want, so I grind up to level 12, learning Detect in the process. I don't actually learn a damaging fighting move until level 29. In Accumula Town, there's a fight with N, but his Purloin is no match for the much higher leveled Norris, who easily beats it down with two pound attacks. On the next route, there's a Bianca fight. Norris takes down Lilliput with Fake Out and two pounds after she heals. Snivy also goes down to two pound attacks, striking back only with Vine Whip. In Stryphon City, there's a fight with Sharon. Oshawott takes Fake Out and heals with a berry. Two pound attacks hit it, sandwiched by a water gun, and it goes down. Next comes Purloin, who goes down to a pair of pound attacks, only hitting back with Scratch. Now we have the Strife and Jim in the fight with Cress. He starts with Lip Up and I go with Shock Horror Norris. I start with Fake Out, then use two Meditates. Lip Up responds with two not very effective bites. I hit it with Pound and it goes down. Next is Pampo, it goes down to two Pound attacks. We hit level 17, one badge down. Next, another battle with Sharon. Norris hits Oshawa with Fake Out, flinching it before meditating. Oshawa uses Water Sport before Norris meditates again. Oshawa lands a critical water gun which leaves Norris in yellow health before being broken by Pound. Next up is Purloin, who also goes down to a powered up Pound. On the route outside Nacreen City, I get the TM for Rock Smash. It's not a good move, but it gives me a stab option as I get Force Palm at level 29. I'll need it for the normal gym. Going up to the museum, I encounter N again. P Dove goes down to Fake Out and Pound. Tim Pole is knocked out by Rock Smash, and Tim Burr is taken out by Rock Smash and Pound. N then runs off screen about getting more power. Next, I make a start on the normal gym, and I would feel more confident with a better fighting move here. Lenora's Pokemon are capable of hitting hard, and we're not exactly tanky. Herdia comes out first and uses Intimidate. I go for Fake Out, and then Meditate to raise the attack power back up. Herdia hits with Takedown, and then Norris knocks the Pooch out with Rock Smash. Next is Watchog. A Rock Smash puts it in yellow health, and then it takes me out with a Crit Retaliate. I might need more power. 
I try again two levels higher using the same strategy as before, only I go for two meditates rather than one. Fake out, meditate, get hit with takedown, meditate, get hit with takedown, rock smash. That deals with Herdia. Out comes Watchog, I have 24 HP left, I need to knock this out in one hit, and I do. Single rock smash floors it, two badges down. In Castelia City, we go after Berg, and I'm more than a little worried about this one. I'm right to be as well. Two meditates during the battle with Whirlipede, and I can two shot it with Pound, though I get poison during it. Norris hits Levani with a Pound that does just under half damage, and it then one twos me with String Shot and Razor Leaf to knock me out. Hmm, I wonder if there's any super effective moves I can get around this time. After looking, I realise not really. Although Mean Fu can learn some rock and flying moves, they're either not available for several more cities yet, or Bounce is learned at level 49. Instead, Norris learns Retaliate, replacing Fake Out. It'll be more practical, and it's twice the power of Pound. I'll still need Pound for run-of-the-mill trainer battles. In the rematch, Norris gets a Peachy Berry. Whirly Peach starts with a Poison Tail, and I go for four Meditates. It lands two Screechers and another Poison Tail, but we're still in good shape as it gets knocked out with Retaliate. Levani is a one-hit with Retaliate. I go for a Pound on Dwebble to break the Sturdy. Strikes back with a not very effective Smackdown, and I finish it with Force Palm. Three badges down. Next is rival battle number 3422 of this game, another fight with Bianca. Herdia uses Intimidate, I use two Meditates to mitigate this, during which I get hit with Takedown twice before laying it out with Force Palm. Muna goes down to a single Retaliate, Servine survives Retaliate and lands Leech Seed, Bianca then heals with a Super Potion, I knock it out with Pound and Force Palm, before she brings out Pampo, who goes down to a single Force Palm. Servine was tricky, that could have gone worse than expected. I'm sure we'll have another rival fight before long. En route 4, I improve right as we face Sharon. p -Dove goes down to Force Palm. Duop takes Force Palm and then heals with a Berry and uses Focus Energy. Another Force Palm renders both actions irrelevant and from the experience, Norris reaches level 33 and I replace Force Palm with Drain Punch, a move I'll keep for the entire run. A single Drain Punch knocks out Pansia and then Lipard 2 with the same attack. On my way to Nimbasa City, I acquire the TM for Rock Tomb, and though it's not as good as it would be in later generations, it gives Norris some coverage. I replace Pound with Return when arriving in the city before we encounter Ren again. When it comes to violence, his Sand Isle goes down to Return before he brings out Sigilif. Rock 2 misses, naturally, and then it goes for the 1-2 combination of Tailwind and then Psybeam, which causes massive damage before the second Rock 2 crushes it. Darumaka hits a headbutt before going down to Drain Punch. That same fate also awaits Scraggy, and once again, it's another rival victory. Next up is Electric Gym Leader Elisa and the infamously annoying Emolga Switcheroo strategy. As we fight, I go for Rock 2 and it misses. Her first Emolga strikes Aerial Ace. The second Rock 2 crushes it. The second Emolga goes down to Rock 2. Zip Striker goes down to Drain Punch. That wasn't as bad as I thought. Leaving Nimbasa City, Sharon appears again. Lipard's fake out is rendered useless by Norris' ability. It gets knocked out with Drain Punch. Tranquil, Drain Punch. Dewot, Drain Punch. Can you guess what I used on Pansia? That's right, Rock 2. It misses. Pansia goes for Yawn. I go for Drain Punch before I fall asleep. Next is Clay, he starts with Crocorock and gets floored by Drain Punch even after intimidating Norris. Palpato gets knocked out with a single Drain Punch. An extra drill? Yeah, it's Drain Punch again and that's the fifth badge in hand. Next is Bianca, her first Pokemon is Herdia who intimidates and then goes down to Drain Punch. Muna goes down to a critical hit U-turn. Pampo goes down to Drain Punch. Servine survives a U-turn before landing Leaf Tornado. Bianca heals with a Hyper Potion, but it's for nothing because it goes down to two return attacks. In Charge Stone Cave, there's another rival fight with then. Bold Dor gets hit with return, it uses dying defence in exchange before getting taken out with Drain Punch. Against Joltik, Norris fails to connect with Rock Tomb, but Joltik misses Electro Web. The second Rock Tomb lands hard to crush it. Both Ferroseed and Clink go down to Drain Punch. Missletron Jim is next, going after Skylar, she starts with Swoobat, who Norris knocks out with return. Unpheasant is problematic. Norris lands Drain Punch, which it survives, she misses an Air Slash. On the next turn, she uses a Hyper Potion, and Norris hits return. She uses a Hyper Potion again, Norris hits two more returns to knock Unpheasant out. Finally, Swanner goes down with Rock Tomb. Six badges down, the TM for Acrobatics will be useful too. At Twist Mountain, Sharon shows up again. He starts with Unpheasant, it gets tagged with Rock Tomb and counters with Air Slash, which does just above half damage to Norris. Return finishes it. Simiseer goes down to Drain Punch, so does DeWatt. While Lipar didn't learn the lesson from the previous fight, it tries to fake out. Norris then floors it with U-Turn. Next up is Ice Trainer Bryson, I'm not worried about this. Vanillish gets KO'd by Drain Punch, Bear Tick gets knocked out by Drain Punch, Kragonal also gets done by Drain Punch, 7 badges down. 
Before going to Dragon Spiral Tower, I get some TMs from around the region, Payback and Rock Slide, the latter of which I teach Norris. I might need the former for the Elite Four later. Before I go into Tube Line Bridge, there's a fight with Bianca. Stoutland intimidates, that'll be important later, but it goes down to Drain Punch. Mashana takes a U turn, then deals big damage with Psybeam before going down to return. Superior lands just above half health before being hit with Drain Punch, and Norris's health is back up. Leaf Blade brings it back down again before Norris takes it down with U turn. Finally, Semi Poor and Drain Punch deals about three quarters of its health before it launches Scald. Leaves Norris on four hit points and burns him. Norris crashes the ground in defeat for the first time in a major battle since the third gym. Hmm. For the rematch, I give Norris the expert belt to boost the power of super effective hits since his attack is going to be weakened. Second bout goes much the same way. Drain Punch for the Intimidating Stoutland, three U turns to Mashana, it takes the first one, strikes Psybeam, and then Bianca uses a full restore. It doesn't get the chance to attack again. Two Drain Punches take down Superior, though it does land a Leaf Blade in between them. Semipore comes out and takes a Drain Punch. I'm in a lot better condition this time. It still survives and burns me again with Scald before Bianca heals it with a full restore. It makes no difference. Norris takes down Semipore with a crit Drain Punch. That was close, but at least this is the last Bianca fight before the post game, so she's done. Finally, we've We've got the Dragon Gym in Opelucid City and Drayden. I hate the puzzle here so much. Fracture goes down to return. Drudigon takes a rock slide and then goes down to a drain punch, landing chip away between blows. Finally, it's Haxorus. A drain punch puts it in red health and it uses Dragon Dance. Drayden heals it with a hyper potion and Norris lands returns to put it in red health. Another heal, another return puts it back in the danger zone. A third return puts it down and the last gym leader is defeated. Before we hit Victory Road, Sharon reappears to the final pre Elite 4 fight. He starts with Unpheasant, who goes down to a crit rock slide. Samurott takes a return and lands Aqua Tail before healing with leftovers. It then goes down to Drain Punch. Lipard goes down to U-Turn. Simiseer goes down to Drain Punch. That was easier than the Bianca fight for sure. By the time I stand outside the Pokemon League, Norris is at level 71, 171 points in attack and 137 in speed is useful. Special defence is low at 78 though. I'm going to run at the Elite 4 now and see how I do. I've got the TM for Acrobatics which I'll use against Marshall and the TM for Payback which will be handy against Chantal. Dealing super effective damage to ghosts is hard for Norris. I try for the Psychic Trainer Caitlyn first as in this gen you can fight the Elite 4 in any order. She begins with Reuniclus who survives a U-turn and knocks Norris out with a single Psychic attack. That went well then. Perhaps I need a few more levels from Victory Road. If I'm ill equipped to deal with her, then I need more preparation for the rest. I could fight the others first, but four armed is forewarned. After a painful grind, I eventually figured that the Elite Four is actually probably my best chance of experience. I go at Grimsley first and he was easy. Scrafty went down to Drain Punch. With Lipard, he tries to flinch an unflinchable Pokemon and it goes down to U-Turn. Bisharp goes down to Drain Punch. Crocodile uses Intimidate but he's also finished by Drain Punch. I'd have been worried if that had come out earlier. I fight Marshall next, replacing Rock Slide with Acrobatics and dropping the Lucky Egg I've been carrying. Fro is a one hit with Acrobatics. Conkelder is a one hit with Acrobatics. Mien Shao faces its pre-evolved form and gets one hit with acrobatics and sort comes out norris lands a u-turn and then takes a karate chop with the sturdy ability broken sort then gets laid out with acrobatics now caitlin or chantal choices choice i replace return with payback and go for chantal manages to knock out confagrigus with two paybacks but it lands psychic chandelier comes back takes payback before KOing norris with shadow ball hmm Level 79 and after half a dozen attempts I try Caitlyn with the expert belt on to boost the power of super effective hit and Reuniclus is a one hit with U-turn as is Mashana. Sigilyph goes down to rock slide and a single U-turn floors Gothitelle. Free Elite 4 down. After much deliberation I decide that since I can't use Drain Punch or Return the best option I have for Chantal is Acrobatics giving it as 110 base power without an item. I replace Return with it since I can relearn it at a later date if needed. Acrobatics does massive damage to Confagrigus. She uses Psych kick that doesn't do more than half my health and she spams full restores meaning i can full hit the ghost type but i don't take any more hits chandelier goes down to rock slide bullet goes down to a critical acrobatics and jellicent takes massive damage from the same attack and lands brine with its own red health but with norris afflicted with cursed body it then gets finished off with u turn Normally this would be where we fight the champion, but since this is Pokemon Black, it doesn't quite play out that way. We've got to catch the legendary Reshiram so we can fight N and Z Krom. 
I use the Master Ball, largely because I can't be bothered getting into a fight. When it comes to when, I hook Pokeballs at Z-Crom until it knocks Reshiram out after what feels like a thousand turns. Then Norris enters the fray. I start with Rock Slide, which flinches it, and then move on to Drain Punch. This leaves it in critical health and then heals. I hit it with U-Turn and then another Rock Slide, which flinches it again before knocking it out with Drain Punch. Clink Clang goes down to Drain Punch, as does Vanillux. Zoroark goes down to U-Turn. Archeops goes down to Rock Slide. And Caracosta goes down first to a U-Turn, because I think it has sturdy and then to a drain punch although it counters with waterfall in the process and now gets this first attempt Cofagrigus takes down Reshiram eventually in what feels like an eternity then when Norris comes out he inflicts massive acrobatics damage before getting hit with toxic which isn't good protect is used twice before Norris takes down the coffin Pokemon Buffalant is a one hit with drain punch as is Hydreigon it makes us live through toxic poison a little longer we do manage to take Electros on with drain punch eventually but the poison is too much as well as being pounded by wild charge and Norris goes down the second attempt goes much the same way taking down four of his Pokemon before getting knocked Knocked out by poison damage. At the fourth attempt, Carfagrius misses Toxic and it gets taken down with two acrobatics attacks. Buffalonk goes down to Drain Punch, Hydragon goes down to Drain Punch. I know from previous attempts that I can't one hit Electros, so I use Rock Slide to try and flinch it with little luck, but it doesn't inflict massive damage with acrobatics considering Norris's weakness to the move. It goes down to Drain Punch. Seismitoad takes Drain Punch and misses Muddy Water before getting healed with a full restore, so I take it down with two acrobatics attacks. Finally, it's by Sharp, and given that it has a four times weakness to fighting attacks, Drain Punch nails it hard. With that, it is game over. That said, though, there is one more fight I can do. I encounter Cynthia in Undella Town and fight her, but Spiritomb spans double team and burns me, and it's not even close to being close. I get Norris to level 100 and make several runs at Cynthia, and eventually I get a run where Norris lands a rock slide on Spiritomb and starts hammering at it with Aerial Ace attacks to mitigate the double teams. After an Aerial Ace, Cynthia uses a full restore, and I continue to land Aerial Aces until it goes down, although I take a Shadow Ball. Bravery goes down to Rock Slide, Milotic goes down to two Drain Punchers, although it does strike Hydro Pump. Lucario goes down to Drain Punch, Garchomp misses two Dragon Rush attacks and lands Earthquake in between getting hit with three Drain Punchers. Electros goes down to two Drain Punchers, landing a Wild Pack Charge in exchange and just like that we have beaten her. So yeah for the most part this was an easy challenge up to the last few battles. Next one won't be that's for sure because I put it to Twitter and it's going to be Pokemon Silver with one Marrow. If you have enjoyed this video and you want to see me make more content like this don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you have any suggestions in the comments for challenges please feel free to make them. If you're interested in any of my other stuff then check out my channel. I've got all sorts of various stuff on there both Pokemon related and otherwise. With that in mind this has been Once and Future Gamer and thanks very much for joining me. Good day to you all. I'll see you next time.